when uh, President Preckwinkle and I were working on the city and county collaboration, one of the things that we both noticed and uh, also the teams that we put together is we spend collectively around $300 million on job training with over about 100 different agencies and organizations on workforce development. Now, in the greater Chicago area, we have about 100,000 job openings and a 10% unemployment rate. And I can't in good conscience, and I think this is something that the President and I both share, and Karen also shares, tell you what we're getting for that $300 million. A lot of challenges we face are we have big problems, and the wrapping paper doesn't go around the problem. Now, unemployment is a big problem, but $300 million is not chump change. That's what we're spending it on. And we can't, and this is a chronic problem. I try to work on this when I was both a congressman as well as chief of staff. We have a lot of agencies and departments all trying to work on the same thing, all trying to achieve the same goal, overlapping, no coordination, no focus. And if you look at it, there have been some t fundamental changes, both in the state of Georgia and in the Cleveland area, where there's been some real reforms done that have actually shown real results. Now, I started working on, we only talked about this, but I started then searching for a good person who could lead this reform of our job training. That person was only 20 feet away, but I kept looking everywhere, and Karen was only 20 feet away, and the President uh, Preckwinkle and I were talking about this, and I said, why don't we just combine our efforts under the leadership, because Karen is exactly the person I'm looking for. If she had a double, I'd do it but it makes more sense to have one person directing the city and county efforts, combining those forces. And it's simple things that can make you frustrated with government. Because of the way we're structured today, if you live in the city of Chicago, you're not notified about job openings in the suburbs. Different systems. So if you live in Austin, there's an opening in Maywood, not notified about it. Now, it's not just one person's job to clear that up, but it's to bring order and focus and reform to that effort. Second is there's a fundamental change when you look at what George is doing, Cleveland's doing, that Karen has been doing here at the county that is really successful in getting now national recognition. And that is it's demand driven. And what does that mean? Is rather than just training people, what are the openings in the marketplace? Where are the openings in the companies? What are the trends in that sector? And then training people to the openings rather than just training them and putting them out in the workforce and say good luck with a pat on the back. This is exactly what we need in our job training. Our goal here, while this is a great organization and does real work, is not keeping this organization alive and well. The goal is that the people walking through the front door are getting served with the skill set they need to go on and succeed. Every person that I think we met individually was working, is unemployed, and is trying to figure out how to make it back in the workforce. This is their lifeline. The resources we pay is their lifeline to make it off the unemployment rolls into a productive life. Now, they do great at work here, but a goal is not to keep this organization afloat. The goal here is to make sure that the organizations like this and other ones are getting the resources to do their job, which is to serve the people we just met because this is the thin blue line between unemployment and employment. And the government, while it has done the right thing by putting the resources there, it hasn't finished the job, which means reforming it, getting the right leadership, the right focus about what does the marketplace require, how do we train people to those skills, and then moving them towards that, rather than just training them with no sense of where the job openings are. And this is just another sign of the collaboration that President Prankwinkle and I have brought to city and county efforts. We identified already about $11 million in our savings. My budget has about $5 million of those efforts. This is better serving our taxpayers and delivering results. And this is another example of where that collaboration can better serve the people we work for, both the taxpayers and the people who are unemployed. And the real partner in this effort is President Prankwinkle. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I want, thank you. One person acknowledged me. 
So I'm a teacher. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank Mayor Emanuel. You know, we share a building, um, but in the past there was little or no uh, cooperation or collaboration between the city and the county. And uh, upon his election at our, our first uh, conversation over lunch, we talked about the importance of trying to work together. After all, the people in the city of Chicago are residents of Cook County, and we have an opportunity to work together not only to save money for our taxpayers, but also to provide services more effectively and efficiently. I want to thank all the folks at National Able and Grace and her staff for the good work that they do, uh, which I learned about when I was at the Chicago Jobs Council. I spent three years in this field in employment training with an advocacy organization that worked with delegate agencies like National Able and uh, citywide civic groups around employment and workforce development issues. So this is something I have a, I have a history with. I want to thank uh, Karen Norrington Reeves, who has been our head of now Cook County Works and before that the President's Office of Employment and Training, uh, for her willingness to come to the county under um, quite difficult circumstances, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, I want to acknowledge Maria Saldana, who's head of our Bureau of Economic Development, Herman Brewer, who's also part of our, our uh, economic development staff, and uh, my compatriot in uh, county government, mm -hmm. Commissioner Garcia. I think it's really important that we put together disparate job training programs and funding into one comprehensive workforce system, one system. This is unprecedented, and it'll help our residents get jobs. As Mayor Emanuel said, the artificial divisions between the city and the county have hampered our ability to serve residents of the entire county. The most significant, the most significant um, mismatch that we have presently is our inability to connect job seekers to available jobs and to training for market demand. When I was at the Jobs Council, I, I was always critical of the city's workforce efforts because it seemed to me that they just took whatever proposal came over the transom. Instead of looking strategically at areas of growth in the economy and trying to train people for sectors that were growing rather than sectors that were stagnant or declining. From the beginning of my administration, we've recognized that better economic development services, and specifically workforce development services, could be provided through consolidation and collaboration. That's why we created our Bureau of Economic Development. We put together our workforce, President's Office of Workforce Development of, of Economic, De I'm sorry, President's Office of Employment and Training. I should get this right. And we changed it to Cook County Works, um, in part in response to our a new direction, but also in, in response um, to ongoing <laughs> federal investigations of uh, the previous administration's handling the yes, of the <laughs> issue. Yes, let's, let's change the name and move forward. Um, <clears throat> we put together our workforce initiatives, uh, planning, capital development, and building and zoning because we wanted to focus more on, on economic development and be more strategic about our, our spending. We understand that economic development is as much about community development as it is about workforce training. And when businesses move into an area, they need a workforce that is ready to meet their needs. We need to communicate that to businesses so that when they move into a local area, they get some help with hiring. This new approach to workforce development will allow companies to find and train employees to fit jobs in the 21st century. Neither geographic boundaries nor systematic inefficiencies in our system should be obstacles. Our goal is to tie job training to employment opportunities and economic development. For example, we need to create a pipeline for existing and future businesses to ensure that we have the primary workforce resources that they need. We'll be able to use technology to discern employer demand, to link job seekers to jobs, and to help determine training goals. Workforce development dollars are critical, and they're too scarce not to be used strategically. Under this new structure, we'll improve how we measure and track our progress to ensure consistency and efficiency across the region. The Chicago Workforce Investment Council has provided us with statistics which will help our performance management initiative. 
and performance management that's data-based will be a key part of our efforts going forward. All workforce programs will be required to track in a more detailed way each individual participant so that we can, we can use this information to inform our provision of services. Under the new system, we'll establish a more effective evaluation system to ensure that funding decisions are data-driven and that they re reflect participant performance. In these tough economic times, workforce development functions are essential. And the changes we're making today will ensure that we continue to deliver services across the region to residents who are unemployed and underemployed. As I turn over the microphone to our work Chicagoland Workforce Board Executive Director, I want to say again that I'm very grateful to Karen for coming on board. She came to us from the State Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity into, uh, as I used to cheerfully say, much to her chagrin, uh, one of the two parts of, of county government that I knew were under federal investigation. Uh, I can't speak highly enough of her ability to meet the challenges that she's faced, and I know she'll meet this new challenge well in addition. Uh, let me turn over the microphone to Karen Norrington Reeves. Thank you. Thank you, President Preckwinkle and Mayor Emanuel. I am honored and privileged to take on this uh, daunting, challenging, yet very exciting task. Um, I'm honored because I'm serving under the leadership of two just dynamic elected officials who I know really care about our communities, really care about significant substantive change, which is what is so deeply needed. I'm also honored because I believe strongly in the need to improve the quality of life of Cook County residents. People are struggling. Um, they're not just underemployed, they're unemployed. And we see that we've got, you see, look at the national average, it says that there's about a 9% unemployment rate. Well, in parts of Cook County, we've got double digit unemployment. We've got 20% unemployment in parts of the Southland. And there has to, something has to be done. Uh, we are exclusively federally funded, as you may know, and those federal dollars only go so far. We have to be in a position to diversify our funding in the same way that we ask our providers to diversify their funding. And through this new structure, we will be able to do that. The other thing I want to highlight is that we have great agencies all throughout the Chicagoland area who are making a difference every single day in the lives of our residents. They don't have enough funding, they don't have enough resources, they don't have enough human capital, and quite frankly, we need to replicate everything they're doing and expand their efforts and maximize their efforts in order to impact more and more people. So I'm very just deeply honored to, um, to have been chosen to undertake this task, but it is going to require a significant amount of, of support and it requires integration. I think it is just so fantastic that President Preckwinkle had the foresight to create the Bureau of Economic Development and to link a workforce development to that because without a skilled, prepared, active workforce, there can be no economic development. We must make jobs, we must retain jobs in order to stimulate our economy. And by bringing together all of our forces, we intend to do that. So thank you for coming out today.